so I'm gonna do a better video on this later when I collect my thoughts, but I, I wanna, I'm here in the redwoods and I wanna talk about it. God, look at that, look at those trees. Look at, look at the one, look at how many there are. It's just a wall and those are huge. When you have to face something really difficult like an existential crisis or loss of a, a loved one, I think I've never really had you know, anything like this happen to this extent where you're told you're gonna probably gonna die. And um, at first, you know, it's like, it's like someone has got you at the edge of a cliff and they're gonna push you off like your brain hears that and it wants to solve the problem but there's literally nothing it can do there's nothing you can do and so you know I didn't know how to deal with that how to deal with uh, that existential crisis and but in time you get used to it I guess and it just becomes a normal part of life, something that is a reality for you that you have to deal with and is different from everyone else. But, you know, the pit in your, when you realize that there's something different about you and it's supposedly bad in society. So when you're dealing with thinking about these things, I've always been interested in science, uh, not as a nerd, more as like a news reader. I'm like a news, a, a, a science news junkie, but I don't, I'm not smart per se, <clears throat> but I take all these things that I learn and I try to pull it all together and create sense of the world. And so one of the things, the, when, when you're in that crisis and you feel like you're standing at the edge of a cliff and you're about to fall, and that anxiety that, that you experience in that moment, it kind of just stays with you all the time. As soon as you wake up in the morning, it's the first thing that pops into your mind. You know, you feel calm and relaxed and then all of a sudden it's just like, and you're back in it again. But, and so there wasn't a lot of things I could do to help me, you know? So what I ended up doing, uh, I started gravitating towards like meditation, and um, I'm like, well, what is that? Like, can I meditate? Can that help me? And what I found out is, you know, meditation, it sounds like exercise, like going to the gym, like who wants to do that? But, but that's, meditation is kind of, I don't know, a distraction from what is actually really going on. And that is to be present. You know, there's, there is no past, there is no future, there is only this moment. And that's this moment right now, this moment. So few people live in this moment right now. Like think about how I, you know, take a moment, like look around you, listen, and then like start to maybe, and just pay attention, you know, if you get mad, you know, think about like, why did I get, why did I get mad? That's, it's about awareness and consciousness <clears throat> because we all come when we get baked, we're born, we have the nature nurture, you know, we uh, have certain traits and things that are inherited, but there's a lot of things that are environmental and we're a product of all of that. And so if you think about it, the brain is just a computer that's executing actions based on who you are. But the, re but the problem is, is that who you are, depending on where you were born, what culture, you could be anybody. You could have these beliefs that you would kill and die for. But if you were born somewhere else, you may not have those beliefs at all. Like freedom of speech is a good example. If you live in Saudi Arabia, 
you're probably used to the fact that people can't just say whatever they want and you would defend, you know, policing speech. But if you live in America, you're going to believe in freedom of speech or whatever. So what I guess I'm trying to say is, is do we have free will? I mean, think about, think about that. Likely your actions and AI someday will probably be able to predict our actions. They can already tell, you know, if a woman is pregnant before she even knows based on her internet search history. Uh, so we, we are just execute, you know, our brain is just, it's on autopilot. We may think we're making these decisions that we're thinking about and whatever, but it's all filtered through that. And everything that you know, everything that comes out of your mouth came from somewhere else. We can make these tiny little leaps, but you, typically there has to be a body of information that came before us that we can build off of to make uh, progress. And, and so what I'm trying to say is, is, do we really have free will? And I would argue that without consciousness, without that ability to stop, with that ability to have spaciousness and be able to make, to calmly be able to, to maneuver the world and also just to let, instead of trying to make things happen, try to take advantage. You're, it's like you're swimming in a fluid and then there's a current. Don't fight the current, you know? Sometimes you need to just flow and let things happen and realize that the world is as it is you are as you are you know in these consciousness things they talk about how anytime you start saying me or i you're already in trouble i mean you really should be thinking about the body of everything but sometimes you know you have to survive sometimes you have to make those decisions to be i guess unconscious and Sometimes we are unconscious even when we're really trying hard, but just because, you know, just because you're unconscious in a moment doesn't mean you can't recover that, apologize, take responsibility and seek forgiveness from others and, and forgive yourself. That process requires consciousness. And I mean, it doesn't require, but, and the other thing is, is like, if you're not being conscious and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing or that are hurtful to others, eventually, uh, eventually that karma is going to catch up with you and you're going to pay the price. And so why not be conscious? And the other thing is like ego. So, you know. My ego, there's some requirement for an ego, probably for survival or whatever. But uh, ego can be very bad if, if, hey, I am this person. I'm an athlete, let's say. That's how I identify. And you attach these things to yourself. And your brain, your brain is like the lungs. It just keeps feeding you shit. Like, think about this. Think about that. Sometimes you're like, oh, that's a dumb thing to think about. But sometimes these really negative things that bother us or something that someone else is doing and we feel we're entitled or something and they're trying to take it away from us. In these types of situations, um, you know, like let's say you're an athlete and you get injured but you identify as an athlete, well, that's gonna become a problem when you're injured, right? You could let that destroy you. Or you could say, well, why did I even identify it with that? It's like, I'm an athlete, I am. No, 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 I, I just, I am. So th that gets us to the next thing is a, like consciousness. So in our brains, it seems like there is a witness and then there is the ego. And the witness is God, the ego is, you know, you, Kyle, me, I, I am. And that ego wants to always attach itself to shit to make it 
seem better than everyone because you're better than everyone because it's you you're better than everyone else to some extent because you're you hopefully though you realize that at certain things other people are better so consciousness is also something that exists whether we're here or not right so so if i were to say uh If I were to say, do you think consciousness existed before you were born? Did it exist after you, you die? Probably. So consciousness is something that seems to be <clears throat> a fundamental, a, you know, reality in a way, or at least a part of it. We don't understand it. We don't know what it is. I wonder if physics can one day come up with an equation or whatever that can explain, you know, everything. But if they do, I'm sure that that will include consciousness, I would think. I think it may be a physical property. This, these are my beliefs. But this is also kind of the basis for meditation and 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 being in the now all this information that i'm like i said we don't i'm not just smart i consumed information that helped me lead me to what i think i believe but i could just be a once again you know falling victim to uh, a bias um but i don't think so because I think it's universal in all religions to some extent to get people to contemplate their actions, to seek forgiveness. Like, these are things that just make us good human beings in, in general. I think a lot of that stuff, though, gets the other stuff involved, you know, is outdated. And But that's the core. And it's probably the same in all religions, this idea of the witness you know anyways it, this makes sense to me and the reason it makes sense in this case is because it works it works God damn it i'm getting bitten up by mosquitoes uh i found that it worked for me when i stay conscious when i consume information about how we are all one that we all come from the same thing we're all gonna go back to that thing and that we are when we look at another person we should be thinking like that's me there you know i'm the witness there too i'm the witness here because i part of me is that is this i hope this is making sense So, am I Kyle or am I the witness? And given what I know about, you know, what I've said about free will and all of that, and how hard it is to even change, you know, your biases and whatever so that you can be a better human, they, you know, because you don't know everything. But if, if you approach things with that, maybe you can do less damage in the world. Maybe you can do good. People think strength is like might. And I think there's a bias for strength being good because in the past, it was probably required physical strength equated to being successful in a battle or whatever. But there was, there's also a different, you know, there's wisdom, you know, Joe Rogan said something about how weak weak men breed strong men and strong men breed weak men that's bullshit it's about it's about more than that it's about strength is something totally different than that it's not about being machiavellian psychopath like so many of our leaders are um strength is i think consciousness being able to look 
beyond the options that are presented and find a way through that fluid, that flowing fluid, don't go against the current, take advantage of the thing. You may not be in the place you wanna be, but take advantage of the things that are there. Don't just pout and fail, self-destruct, become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So <clears throat> I try to remember, you know, when my brain starts telling me, cause it's compulsory, it's like your lungs, it's like breathing. It's like, hey, think about this. Hey, think about how you're gonna die. So, so our brain makes this compulsory thing, sometimes about negative things. Our ego tries to attach itself to these ideas and concepts about who we are. 